the Cow Palace in San Francisco. Mr. Chairman, I'm really grateful that we can do this for America. South Carolina has 16 votes for Senator Barry Goldwater. That moment was the culmination of years of hopes and dreams and lots of hard work on the part of millions of Americans who still believe in the American dream of freedom for the individual and the essential dignity of man. Events in the Cow Palace opened the final stage of a campaign that started back on January 3rd, 1964, at his home in Phoenix, when Senator Barry Goldwater announced his candidacy. I am convinced that in this year of 1964, we must face up to our conscience and make a definite choice. We must decide what sort of people we are and what sort of a world we want, now and for our children. April 14th, Goldwater wins Illinois primary. May 5th, Goldwater wins Indiana primary. May 12th, Goldwater wins Nebraska primary. June 2nd, Goldwater wins the all-important California primary. Again, thank all of you who have worked so hard and repeat what I said last night. I have never in all of the political years of my life seen such a, a fired up grassroots movement. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what wins campaigns and that's what will beat Lyndon Baines Johnson. And one month later on July 15th, Goldwater is nominated for President of the United States by Senate Minority Leader Everett McKinley Dirksen. And I'm proud to nominate my colleague from Arizona to be the Republican nominee for President of the United States. In his acceptance speech, Goldwater strikes a responsive chord in the hearts and minds of Americans across the country when he says, Now my fellow Americans, the tide has been running against freedom. Our people have followed false prophets. We must and we shall return to proven ways, not because they are old, but because they are true. We must and we shall set the tides running again in the cause of freedom. Representative William Miller, his running mate from New York, joins with Senator Barry Goldwater from Arizona to set the tide running again in the cause of freedom. Here, Bill Miller pledges himself to this greatest challenge of his life and urges others to join with us in once again carrying forward our commitments for the well-being of every human being. In this great common purpose, I now stand at the side of a man who more than ever, any other I have ever known in American life speaks the truth to the people, courageously stands for principle, and devotes himself completely to keeping America free, the great son from Arizona, Barry Goldwater. November 3rd, the day of decision is none too soon. November 4th may be too late. That's why the Citizens for Goldwater Miller was formed, for positive, intensive, effective political action. And here is the national chairman of the Citizens for Goldwater Miller, General Jimmy Doolittle. As Citizens for Goldwater Miller, we have a big job to do, an important job to do. That's why you're involved. That's why citizens committees are forming and getting organized all across the country, in every precinct, to meet and plan and work for the election of our candidates. They are raising money, giving speeches, sending out mailings, manning sound trucks, engaging in the kind of political action that really counts. 
Believe me, it's what you do at the grassroots level that will determine the outcome of this election. And thank goodness we still have the opportunity in this country, by our own efforts, to register our protest and to work for the promise of a better, a sounder, a saner way of life. That's why we say November 3rd is none too soon. November 4th may be too late. As national chairman, I hope you will join with the citizens for Goldwater Miller. I urge you to persuade others to join in this great crusade. A crusade that started long before San Francisco. This grassroots movement was taking shape in towns and villages and cities across the country. Here, and here, and here. Wherever people gathered to listen, to learn, to take part in local politics. It started with groups of Americans of every age, in every state, from every walk of life. It started with individuals who feel in themselves a deep conviction about the course of our national life and who feel in themselves the power to do something about that conviction. Barry Goldwater is supported by people who agree with him on the role the federal government should play in the lives of the people, a limited role as outlined by the Constitution. They agree on the need for prudent fiscal policies which will maintain the integrity of the dollar. They agree on the importance of moral integrity in government at every level, even at the top. And especially they agree with him on foreign policy and his peace through strength philosophy. In their own words, the citizens come out for Goldwater. I couldn't possibly tell you after living under LBJ for a long, long time in Texas what it's like to have a candidate like this. He's just wonderful. Well, I think Mr. Goldwater is the man that we need. I think this country has uh, uh, gone away from the principles on which it was founded, and I think he's the man that will bring us back to the days of free enterprise and uh, uh, the vigor and youth that this country had and the uh, enthusiasm that the people had. I think Barry Goldwater is the man that is going to give us a clear-cut choice between candidates and issues and philosophies. And I think the people of the United States deserve a clear-cut choice for a change. I think he's the first man to run for president that I've seen in the past 30 years that will stand on the principles of the founding fathers who wrote the federal constitution. These Americans and millions like them are ready, willing, and able to speak out for what they believe and to translate their beliefs into action. In this year's primary elections, Senator Goldwater polled more votes than all the other candidates combined. And more people voted for him than for any other political candidate in any primary in the history of this country. Goldwater supporters are now forming the core of the Citizens for Goldwater Miller. And they are joined by leaders from all parts of the country who are uniting behind the Goldwater Miller ticket in an all-out effort for victory on November 3rd. And here is the man who will be the chief standard bearer for that victory, Barry Goldwater. What kind of man is he? Where did he come from? What does he stand for? Why does he appeal to so many Americans from every walk of life, from every state in the Union? Goldwater is a man of the West, born to the tradition of free enterprise and individual responsibility. He's a major general in the Air Force Reserve with a sound judgment, fast reflexes, and steady nerves required to pilot the fastest jet airplanes. He's a husband, father, and grandfather, deeply concerned about what the future holds for his family and for all American families. He has served 12 years in the United States Senate on some of its most important committees and has emerged as the voice of conscience for an ever-growing body of Americans who share his deep political and moral convictions. To men who believe in God, Man's freedom is divinely conferred. It's not a privilege granted by the state. And I think this is the most important political difference of all. If you see man as having this spiritual nature, you also can understand governments like ours and constitutions like ours. In fact, I don't know how else you could conceive of such governments. And on the other hand, what happens when you see a man as just a high order of animal? just a sort of complex machine on legs. It's easy to go from that view of man to governments that operate like a machine, rolling over people and grinding out power. And I happen to feel that people not only can handle most of their own private affairs, I think they should. 
I don't think that any government ever created is so all wise that it can run your life or your family better than you can. And there's another responsibility that government owes to every wage earner and particularly to the retired people, to social security recipients or all older people who have to live with a fixed income. And that responsibility is simply to keep our dollar sound. Make it worth the same tomorrow as it is today. Now, what does all this mean? What does it mean right at the base? What does it mean in terms of domestic policy? It means that I oppose a big brother type of government. I want to see you hold the power in government. I want to see honest government with honest programs. I want someone to think about saving your dollars as much as they think about taking your votes. I want to see our tax system overhauled from top to bottom. Now, what about foreign policy? Here's one of the most clear responsibilities of the president. The Constitution lays this one squarely on his desk. A president isn't called on to chase around running every little part of the nation's life, but he certainly is called upon to tackle the problem of foreign policy. There's no ifs. No ands, no buts. I needn't remind you, we've fought three wars in our time because we let ourselves get weak. And we're fighting in Vietnam right now because of indecision and weakness. And I say this, we can prevent war now and in the years ahead if we remain strong. I don't want to see our peaceful world nibble to death by an enemy that is never sure of just where we stand or where we're heading. I don't want to see another war through weakness in my lifetime or in the lifetime of my four children or my four grandchildren or your children. If we stay strong enough, if we are determined enough, if we are dedicated enough, along with our allies, we'll win this struggle in the world and we'll keep the peace at the same time. And we'll set the stage for a world in which all nations can disarm in mutual trust in a world of open societies. And I'd like to think, above all, that one day soon there would be an American president and that history would record that president this way, that this was the time that the American president said to Nikita Khrushchev, Mr. Khrushchev, you are wrong. Our grandchildren will not live under communism. No, Mr. Khrushchev. Your children will live under freedom. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce my co-chairman of Citizens for Goldwater Miller, a most charming and able stateswoman, Mrs. Claire Booth Luce. Thank you, General Doolittle. It's a privilege to work with you. And uh, it's a challenge to work for the citizens for Goldwater Miller. When Senator Goldwater asked me to second his nomination for the presidency in California, I accepted with pleasure this great honor. First, because he is a man of courage and integrity. Second, because I believe that he is right on the important issues. Third, because he represents the last best chance to preserve a strong two-party system. Senator Goldwater and Representative Miller and their high ideals, the ideals for which they stand simply must win in November for the sake of all Americans. That's why I am working that's why I'm so glad to work as co-chairman of the Citizens for Goldwater Miller and to work with General Doolittle and with Mr. Cliff White, our national director at Citizens for Goldwater Miller. Here is Mr. Cliff White. Thank you, Mrs. Luce. I'd like to read a quote that is most appropriate to these times and that I am sure many of you will recognize. Not with presidents, not with politicians, not with office seekers, but with you rests the question, shall this republic 
and shall its liberties be preserved to this latest generation. Now I want to remind you that we as citizens for Goldwater Miller are uniting behind two strong and able leaders to turn the tide of political events in this country. And this election won't be won in Washington or on Madison Avenue or by the newspapers and the networks or somewhere high up in political councils or smoke-filled rooms. It will be won at the local level, in your town, in your district, at your polling place, with you and by you, the citizens of the United States the citizens for Goldwater Miller. We are ready and able to help you on the national, state, and local level with all types of campaign aids, printed materials, pamphlets, posters, stickers, and buttons, with suggestions on how to organize and how to carry out a campaign designed to meet your particular problems. We can provide visual materials, films, and tapes, and speakers for special occasions. Get in touch with your local or state Citizens for Goldwater Miller organization or write to the national headquarters in Washington. We are counting on your help and your support right down to the wire. We need it to win. With it, we cannot fail. My candidacy is pledged to a victory for principle and to presenting an opportunity for the American people to choose. Let there be a choice, right now and in clear, understandable terms. And I ask all those who feel and believe as I do to join with me in assuring both the choice and the victory. Join with the millions of citizens for Goldwater Miller who are working in this great crusade to bring victory for freedom. November 3rd is none too soon. November 4th may be too late.